Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I will show you how you can use the new Unity water system in HDRP, let an object float on the water, and change the floating settings with the help of Game Creator 2. We need Unity 2023, which is in beta, but in this version, the water system has more features, and I want to use foam, which comes with version 2023. I can promise you that the foam will let the water look more realistically, like the water made with the Unity asset, Crest HDRP. Unity 2022 utilizes the new water system as well, but the water seems then like in the Unity asset KWS water, but has far fewer features. Let us start with the tutorial. First of all, we have to prepare our project so that we can use the new water system. We open the project settings and look for the water settings under quality, HDRP. We enable water, and we check all other checkboxes below it too. Now, we add a global volume to the scene, creating a new profile and adding the override water rendering. We enable everything in the water rendering settings. Now we add the new Unity water system to our scene by right-clicking on the hierarchy window, and then we click water, surface, ocean, sea, or lake. This step is optional, and you can skip this step, but the current volumetric clouds are flickering and annoying me, so I also change some cloud settings. Much better. So the water looks great, but it misses the foam. So we add a new empty game object as a child of the ocean game object and call it foam. Then we add the water foam generator component to it. We also check if foam is enabled in the water surface component that we have added to our ocean game object. Here is our foam. You can play around with the settings in the foam component to get it to your liking. Now the water looks to me like in Crest HDRP. Let's turn on caustics and underwater rendering. And now let's see how it looks underwater. It works but you can't see too far. So let's play around with the settings. and it is absorption distance that allows us to change the view distance underwater. Let's see what this looks like when we add a cube to the scene. I also change the scattering color to my liking. Perfect. If I want to change the intensity or size of the waves, I have to play with these settings here. Repetition size, distant wind speed, and change them to my liking. Done. The next step is buoyancy. We want that our cube floats on the water's surface. First, we add a rigid body to our cube
and turn off use gravity. I have prepared a script for this purpose called Floater, which is based on a script from the YouTube channel KB Made It, but his script won't work in Unity 2023, so I had to make some adjustments. We add the Floater component to our cube and drag and drop our cube and the Unity water system into our script. Then we set the settings in the Floater script. You have to play around with the settings to find the one that best works for you. I use here some random numbers. And here is, by the way, the script. Most of the work has been done by KB Made It. I just made it compatible with Unity 2023. Okay, let's see how this works now and hit the play button. Perfect, it works. Now we can play around with the floater settings to get the cube floating on the surface like we want it. We set the mass of the cube in the rigid body component. In the next step, we use a Game Creator 2 instruction to change the settings in the floater component. I have made a little custom instruction for this purpose. Let's first add an action to the scene and add my instruction to it. You can find it under Aron Unity Water Set Floating Properties. Drag and drop the cube into floater and change the floater settings to your liking. If we want to change the mass of the rigid body, then we have to make use of the change mass 3D instruction, which comes with Game Creator 2. Now let's hit play again. And fire the game creator instruction. As we can see, it works fine. You have probably noticed a setting called floaters in the floater script. We can use this setting if we want to attach several floaters to a game object like a ship or a simple large object. Let me show you how this works to make this tutorial complete. I increase the size of our cube to demonstrate this on a larger floating object. Now I add two empty game objects and call them floating points, one and two. Then I added the component floater to both created floating points and set it with random settings. Now I move the floating points to the edges of the former cube. And now we hit play. And as we can see, the floating behavior has changed. We can move the floating points around to change the floating behavior of the object, and with my instruction, we can change the floating settings of the two floating points. That's it. See you next time.